Welcome to this edition of the Carl Jackson Show podcast. What is Nikki Haley really up to? I mean, it's pretty obvious by now that she will not become the Republican nominee to face Joe Biden or Gavin Newsom or whomever the Democrat uh, nominee will be in the November election, likely Joe Biden. But what is she really, really up to? I've got uh, I've got some conclusions that I've come to and I, that I want to talk to you about. Also, there was this big news. Have you heard this news about this AI porn of Taylor Swift? Uh, it's serving as a big wake up call. Uh, let me tell you why. If this were to happen uh, to someone as it's, it's weird as this may sound, this is it, it's actually a good thing that it happened to Taylor Swift. I'm not the only conservative that has this particular tape. Uh, this particular take. I'll explain why that is the case. All of that and more coming up on this edition of the Carl Jackson Show. All right, guys, welcome to the Carl Jackson Show, your daily dose of objective truth in a world of confusion and lies. I want to do this as well. Uh, I want to go back to some of the news stories uh, as uh, of yesterday uh, and and take those on as well as today. Some things that I didn't get to yesterday that I want to make sure that I get to today. I ended up not recording uh, yesterday, but uh, we're doing a couple today, putting them, putting them out. I hope you will get an opportunity to listen to them. Uh, let me let me do this real quick before we get to the news. Let me take on this Nikki Haley deal because there are a lot of people opining on why Nikki Haley is still in the race. Why is she even bothering? Uh, she doesn't stand a chance. I have my own take, but also Victor Davis Hanson of American Greatness wrote a fantastic piece. I won't go into all the details, but I want to mention some of the things that he mentioned as far as why he believe uh, why he believes Nikki Haley is staying in the race. Essentially, Nikki Haley's strategies is what the column is called. Uh, but I have a few of my own takes that I'd like to share. It, that uh, that I think just deal with human nature, and I want to get into that. But Victor Davis Hanson uh, kind of tackles it for more a uh, more of a political strategy of Nikki Haley. So let's go through some of the things that uh, he said, and 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 just a refresher, real quick. Obviously, uh, Nikki Haley had a very disappointing night in Iowa first, uh, but she used that for whatever reason. She used the her Iowa loss, a third place finish, finishing after. After Ron DeSantis, who I believe got approximately 21, uh, 21 to 22 percent of the vote somewhere in that area. Uh, Donald Trump got over 50 percent of the vote in Iowa. And then you had Nikki Haley that got uh, 19 percent. And we found out later that she only got 19 percent because many Democrats crossed over in the Iowa caucus to uh, uh, to vote for Nikki Haley. And I'll talk to you about that as well, because there's an operation that is called primary pivot that you guys may or may not know about. I, I Actually, it's what I suspected all along. I did not know that there was an organized movement, so I'll talk about that shortly, but it's called Primary Pivot. It basically, it's Rush Limbaugh's Operation Chaos on the left, getting as many independents and Democrats to vote for Nikki Haley in the primary in order to drag the Republican primary uh, the Rep Republican primary along. But I think Nikki Haley does have a political strategy, and I think she's also warring uh, with human nature. And again, uh, and 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 again, I'll uh, I'll get to that. <clears throat> but uh, all right, so here's what Victor Davis Hanson says. He says the first thing uh, she can do. Oh, by the way, the summary. You know, she lost Iowa. She came in third. Obviously, she came in second in New Hampshire, but she lost big time in New Hampshire. Uh, even though she lost, she was the race was closer than we expected. But the race was only as close as it was, even though she still lost by over 10 points. I think it was 11 or 12 points. So she still lost in a race that should have been more favorable to Nikki Haley as a moderate. Because in New Hampshire, the primaries are open uh, or it is an open primary. So independents, you know, uh, and Democrats can vote for the GOP nominee, which is absolutely stupid. We should have closed primaries, Republicans, please. Let's get this situation resolved. I have no idea why in 2024 we still have open primaries, except rhinos love being rhinos. They like being liked by both sides. And guys, if you're going to fix the country, uh, that is just simply not going to happen. Uh, but Nikki Haley does bad in New Hampshire. She loses, comes in third in Iowa. She comes in a distant second as well in New Hampshire. Uh, Trump is the first president. 
uh, in modern history to win both the Iowa and Iowa caucuses and the New Hampshire primary. Uh, so it's a it's a historic election, despite the fact that the turnout in Iowa was uh, eerily low. So hopefully that is in a cautionary tale, uh, maybe because the Trump was leading or so far ahead in the polls. Maybe people just decided to stay home. I hope that doesn't happen uh, on Election Day. Uh, but uh, but so hopefully that isn't a cautionary tale. But here's what Victor Davis Hanson writes. Here's here's what he believes uh, Haley's strategies could be. All right. First, he said she can exit. She can endorse Trump, promise to campaign for him with independence and crossover voters and expect an offer of a cabinet position or ambassadorship as she prepares to run again uh, in 2028. So that would make sense. Right. Uh, she's that candidate. Uh, they can attract the independents and crossover voters. If she gets another cabinet position or ambassadorship, um, she prepares to run in 2028. And what does she do? She stays relevant. She stays in front of the camera. She stays in the minds of the American people. And quite frankly, I, I'm not one to believe that Americans are going to hold what she's doing now, staying in the race longer than she should against her. I, I think the world is going to get so crazy. We've already seen how crazy it's gotten. I think it's going to get even crazier leading up to 2028. And so I think people are largely going to forget about uh, what Nikki Haley is doing right now. So that's the one thing, right? She can endorse Trump. Promise to campaign for him with independents and moderates, become a part of his cabinet, and that way she she stays politically viable uh, for 2028. Because remember, as soon as this president, the next president, is elected, you're going to be off to the races again in 2026, right? Just a couple of short years. These presidential campaigns go on for a long time now. It's so it's so exhausting, but it is what it is. All right. The second thing. Uh, Victor Davis Hanson writes, is Haley can campaign even harder. She can raise lots more never Trump money and mimic a tactic that George H.W. Bush uh, did in his second place year long candidacy in 1980. So apparently and I didn't I didn't notice I didn't realize this. Obviously, I wasn't paying attention to politics uh, because I was just a few years old <laughs> at the at the time. And so, uh, and I hadn't, uh, I hadn't dove into that. I've read enough on Reagan and Bush, but I, I, I had not dove into that history, quite frankly. So uh, apparently, what George H. W. Bush did was he ran a years long campaign all along, all along, you know, the entire time against uh, against Ronald Reagan, who apparently was going to beat him out uh, that year, but he he continued his second place. Uh, candidacy throughout the entire primary. Uh, and Victor Davis Hanson writes, the advantages of Bush's hard campaigning and appeal to centrists finally impressed Reagan realists. So apparently there were uh, Reaganites that didn't like George H.W. Bush, but his constant campaigning uh, impressed Ronald Reagan. And I think probably put him in a uh, pressurized situation where he's like, hey, man, I got to pay attention to this guy. So Reagan was impressed by it. Bush himself won over a hesitant Reagan. He writes to the once unthinkable idea of putting the uh, aristocratic blue blood on the ticket as a balance to the supposedly hard right Reagan. Uh, so he was being called hard right. The ensuing Reagan Bush ticket smashed the incumbent at the time, Jimmy Carter, one of the worst presidents uh, in American history. Eight years later, Bush himself was rewarded by being nominated without much opposition in the primaries, and he was then endorsed by President Reagan. Now, I know that Trump and Nikki Haley are at odds right now, but I could foresee a situation like this. I hope that if Trump does become the nominee, uh, or I'm sorry, it, it's likely that he's going to become the nominee. But if he does, you know, uh, uh, become the president, I I can foresee a situation like this. I hope that he wouldn't endorse anyone. Frankly, I hope that you will allow the Republican Republicans to fight it out. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll have to see. Uh, but he says, hey, listen, Haley might do the same, moderating her attacks on uh, front runner Trump as she plays the noble opponent for a few more primaries. And she plays if she plays the noble opponent, uh, you know, then maybe 
uh, and, and, and lessens up her attacks, then, you know, Trump likes being praised. Let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. Maybe he says, listen, she's a hard fighter. He eventually wins a nomination, sews it up, and he might forgive her. And, you know, he says he gets even. And I, I know that can be the case. But from all I hear, from what I hear, too, from people that know him well, he is, once you get to know him, he is a very forgiving guy as well. So we'll have to wait and see. But uh, Hanson writes that she, that way she might angle for the VP nomination, promising to deliver millions of centrist voters. Now, I've got to come back to this because there is a problem with that narrative. I'm not convinced that Nikki Haley is as popular with centrists uh, as as she would like to believe and as many people believe. Um, he says such service would also uh, boost her profile in a final four-year Trump administra administration and position her well for 2028. Or third, Haley can limp about for a few more primaries, have hazardly campaign, and slowly fizzle out. Uh, that rope-a-dope strategy would be to remain a backup candidate, obviously in case Trump is indicted. He says an inert Haley would serve as the only remaining Republican alternative to Trump on the chance he might be convicted and jailed and thus either be unable to actively campaign or wounded as the first felon to run as a major party candidate. So she could do that as the backup. Uh, listen, as bad as Biden is, I just don't I don't foresee a scenario where Nikki Haley can win on her own. I, I, I don't. If she were to be a vice president and, you know, uh, for Trump or something like that, and I pray to God that isn't the case. But if she were to be, um, you know, then I could foresee him propelling her into uh, the White House. Right. You know, <clears throat> uh, the fourth thing that Haley uh, can do is go full board dead ender route, he says. Uh, she would ratchet up her harsh attacks on Trump's age and emulate the 2016 never Trump nihilism. And uh, apparently that has gotten uh, Trump upset where Nikki Haley is saying, ah, he's starting to lose a step and so on, et cetera. A person, uh, apparently that has bothered him uh, to, to, to some degree. And you could understand, uh, you could understand why, because that's the same argument that the, that we're using against Joe Biden. But it's so obvious with Joe Biden, everybody and their mother can see that Joe Biden is obviously struggling with cognitive problems. Right. Uh, so Haley couldn't win, but she could hurt Trump in the manner that never Trump vote wounded Trump in 2016 and might even have helped defeat him uh, in 2020. Victor Davis Hanson writes, Haley would win accolades. Uh, from the media, be canonized for a while by Democrats and ever Trumpers as a brave maverick speaking truth to power and essentially blow up her political uh, career. I'm not convinced of that. Uh, choice one, uh, the Ron DeSantis route is the most logical, he writes, but Haley might well choose the riskier options two and three of staying in the race. Option four would end her career, delight an ailing Biden campaign, and could give the country more of the 2020 uh, 2021, 2024 madness rather than a return to what worked in 2017 and 2020. Okay, um, so here's here's where I agree with Victor Davis Hanson, except uh, except the fourth except the fourth one. All right, the fourth one, Haley can go full bore, dead uh, dead ender uh, dead ender route uh, because Americans have such short term memory. Um, I, I don't believe that. I believe that the country is going to get so chaotic, even even if Trump is to win the White House. You, you know, you're running against communists now. We have the, the Democrat Party has been co-opted by communists. All this craziness is simply going to ratchet itself uh, uh, up. It's not going to get any uh, better. All right. So I do believe that when times get tougher, people start looking for a savior. If they're not, you know, uh, if they're not deeply religious and so technically, uh, Nikki Haley could be that savior. I believe Nikki Haley, I, I, I believe, just thinking of human nature, what Victor Davis Hanson writes makes a lot of sense strategically, but just thinking of uh, human nature and, 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 and the human spirit. <coughs> is it possible that Nikki Haley is just being vindictive? I, I, I mean, let's, let's be honest. She's going to walk away from this campaign, uh, and she's already made a lot of money with Boeing, She'll be put, uh, even if she loses, she'll be put on some other board somewhere. She'll be hired as a consultant somewhere 
or she'll be, you know, hired with some company somewhere. She's going to make a buttload of money in the future. I mean, that that's sadly, that's just where we are in the political realm. You get to know the inner workings of, of D.C. a little bit, the inner workings of politics, even at a state level. You become buku rich. I, I don't I don't understand it, but it is what it is. Uh, maybe just the networking or whatever, the connections that you might have. Knowing who to talk to, knowing what type of bills are coming down the pike, I, I don't know. Uh, but nonetheless, Nikki Haley will be very well off. Her pa her family will be very well off, no matter what happens in this uh, happens in this election cycle. It, could it be that she's sticking the middle finger up to the RNC, saying you never gave me the chance uh, to debate Donald Trump one on one, and so I'm taking this opportunity uh, and taking my argument straight to the people. Could it? I mean, could it be something as simple as that, right? Uh, I, I, I think, I think it's possible. I think it's possible. I mean, Nikki Haley to me has proven to be a worthy politician. I mean, this is a lady that uses the uh, uses the race card. Uh, this is the lady that uses the uh, vagina card. This is a lady uh, that has literally, you know, said on on air or in a podcast and then denied it that. Uh, she would basically like censorship uh, when it comes to social social media or everybody to be uh, to identify themselves where they're when they're on some uh, social media platform. No anonymity and all this kind of stuff. This is a big government lady, in other words. Right. Uh, she's also a policy hawk. Listen, I have no problem. I want the American military to be absolutely strong, but I don't want us to get involved in any conflict uh, that we absolutely do not uh, do not have to. Um I don't want to get involved in a conflict just for the sake of getting involved in a conflict. So could it be possible that Nikki Haley is just throwing up the middle finger, right, to the RNC, to Ronna McDaniel? Uh, because uh, whether you like it or not, what we're seeing is unprecedented. Uh, the fact that, and I know it's tradition, it's not in the Constitution or anything, uh, but typically you would have debates where the front runner would have to debate and take incoming uh, from from the other candidates. Uh, uh, Trump didn't have to do that because we live in a different era. He's very popular. He has 1,000% name recognition compared to, and there isn't no, anywhere in the world, I don't think you could go where people have not heard of Donald uh, Donald Trump. And so it was a political strategy for him. The problem with that is other people miss out, including the candidates, on the opportunity to question him about some of the bad things he did while he was in office. So could it be that Nikki Haley is like, screw you, RNC, you didn't give me that opportunity, so I'm taking it now? I, I think it could. She's going to be OK either way. I, I hate to tell you, she's going to be wealthy either way. So maybe she doesn't care. Or what about this? What if this is a I told you so moment? What, what what if she's banking, what if she's absolutely uh, convinced that Trump loses in November? And if that were to come to fruition, let me just entertain this for a sec. She's in the best position since Ron DeSantis has dropped out to say, I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. You should have picked me, blah, 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 blah. Could it be as simple as that? Now, I could have got the independents. I could have got the Democrats, so on, et cetera. But, but here's what I want to say to that. Um, let's see. Let's see if I have it here. Hopefully, I did not. Oh, you got to be kidding me. I think I accidentally deleted it. Of course, I did. Okay, so anyway, there is a group an organized left-wing group that is called Primary Pivot, all right? And basically, oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. Okay, so this is from BizPack Review, all right? Fanatical well-funded group organizing voters to stop Trump in primaries. Their alleged goal may surprise you, the article says. Critics are raising concerns about a highly organized, well-funded, and experienced, quote-unquote, campaign to treat former President Donald Trump out of a primary win. Uh, the campaign is being waged by Primary Pivot, a leftist group that's been urging Democrat voters to switch their party affili affiliation so that they can vote in the GOP presidential primary elections. Uh, the organization, and I'm quoting, Rationale is simple. If Trump poses an extraordinary threat to American democracy, as many liberals and left-leaning independents believe, then those same voters should embrace extraordinary methods to stop him. 
All right. So the campaign's results were most recently seen in New Hampshire, where Trump beat presidential candidate Nikki Haley by a much smaller margin of victory than expected. But Haley didn't perform well because of Republicans turning on Trump. She performed so well because Democrats switched their party status so they could vote in the GOP primary. So I say that to say this. And again, this isn't necessarily independence, although they did uh, search for independence as well. Um, is it possible that Nikki Haley doesn't hold the sway even with the independent and centrist movement that she believes? How do we know? How do we know that she's so good with independents or centrists if in order to get close in a race, the vast majority of her, or I shouldn't say the vast majority, but a good portion of her votes were literally coming from Democrats that were switching over in primaries to vote for her. Where is the centrist or an independent enthusiasm? It wasn't with Nikki Haley. I'm looking at the wrong camera. Keep forgetting my camera's out. <laughs> so I, I don't. I, so I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I. This could be. I. I. I told you so. Moment. If Trump loses again, she might be the best position to say that if he loses in November. Um, I think Ron DeSantis would have to come out swinging if Trump loses um, and not run run the crappy campaign that he ran uh, this first uh, this first go round. And hopefully Trump won't lose. But I think that's what Nikki Haley could be banking on in short term memory loss. If the country gets worse, becomes worse, if if Biden remains the president, if he wins reelection, you know, the you know, that's an administrative state. Guys, the world and America is going to get so bad, you might be desperate for anyone except Biden. And I think it's possible Nikki Haley is banking on that. All right, moving on. Guys, again, please subscribe to the podcast wherever you go to get your podcast. Apple, uh, Google, Spotify, YouTube, and Rumble. I'm going to ask you because we're going to be tackling some controversial uh, subjects. I'm not just going to talk about the daily uh, news, the same old, same old that everybody's talking about. I will give you some of the headlines. I will I will continue with Jackson's 5, although I didn't do it today uh, going forward, although there are some things that I wanted to mention uh, going forward. But I'm going to talk about big issues, important issues uh, that uh, that are important for you to be knowledgeable, knowledgeable about to save America. And what I'm going to do is pre prevent policy or present policy issues to you where you can call your congressman, your senator, your state legislatures on particular issues, and you can fight for those issues. Guys, you got to know what you're fighting for. You've got to know what you're standing for. It isn't enough to vote Republican. It isn't enough to say you're MAGA. It, it that that isn't enough. You've got to be able to, uh, you've got to be able to defend what you believe and know what you believe. You got to know what you stand for, and you've got to be a person of that of conviction but also policy, because you want to be able to explain to your fellow man, your fellow American, why you believe uh, what you believe. OK, so now moving on, here's a story uh, that I wanted to share. I heard about yesterday. Uh, and have you guys heard this story with Taylor Swift? And obviously, Taylor Swift is all in the news. She's a big story. She's uh, she's dating Travis uh, Kelsey, tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs, and that's been a big deal. And someone presented this. There was a game a couple of weeks back where Kansas City Chiefs, I was looking forward to watching it, but you had to you had to pay for it on Peacock or be subscribed to Peacock or whatever. It wasn't presented like the other, uh, the other games, you know, free. Um, so I was like, why would they do that? It makes no sense. And then somebody said it. Taylor Swift is there. What, it, it, a great strategy by the NFL – to earn some more money, uh, basically, and and I don't know that th that this is the case, but it made total sense to me. If Taylor Swift is going to be there, people that don't care about the NFL, people that don't care about football, are probably going to be paying attention to football, right? Since Taylor Swift is there, so what better way uh, than to have people that wouldn't wouldn't otherwise watch NFL football than to have Taylor Swift fans pay? <laughs> and I'm like, hey. If that's true, it's absolutely brilliant. All right, so here's something that's come out that I think is rather disgusting, and I, I it couldn't have happened to a better person. Now, I don't mean that in the way in which you think I mean that, because I listen. I don't believe Taylor Swift is obviously probably the most well-known star after Donald Trump. 
And, uh, you know, she seems to be, she's obviously a lefty, uh, but she, she seems to be a nice, decent person. I know she has an upbringing in Christianity, although, uh, to me, she seems lost. Uh, she's gotten her uh, Hollywood, Hollywood worldview mixed up with her biblical worldview. Uh, and, and it's just, it just isn't, that marriage just doesn't work out uh, at all. But here's something that's very disconcerting that I think everyone should be concerned about. Uh, so an AI porn of Taylor Swift is a wake-up call. Uh, this is according to the New York Post. House must pass bill making this a federal crime. So if you or, you or I or Gabe was featured in AI porn, uh, nobody would care. All right? Nobody would care. But this is really cruel and it's really sick. And it can destroy people. You know, if, if, if this were to happen to somebody, a regular uh, average, you know, uh, Joe or Kelly or whatever, you know, this may ruin someone's life to the point of suicide. But since it's happened to Taylor Swift and she's all the buzz lately, this is a big deal. And more people are going to be paying attention to it that wouldn't have otherwise. So that's why I say it couldn't have happened to a better person because I don't listen. There's a lot of good. I'm sure that AI can and will be able to do, but there's also a lot of bad, just like with anything else that'll come with it, you know, and, and when it comes to someone's got to input AI, right? It, it doesn't just take on a life of its own. Someone's got to input information. Uh, so if lefties or sick, twisted people input information eventually i guess if ai is kind of able to think on its own it's going to be uh there's going to be a world view that's implemented into ai that just simply isn't good i'm concerned that ai will try to wipe out biblical values and worldview and de just diminish them at every step possible i'm concerned that ai will try to do the same to american history try to do the same to the traditional family i'm concerned about those things and how ai will be used i believe to eliminate what made this country so great that's what i'm concerned about right but this is very disconcerting as well uh, but one of the things that ai can do is bring attention to problems that exist amplify them so that they're taken care of so now taylor swift uh, apparently pictures appeared on x formerly known as twitter with uh portraying taylor swift and some very a new taylor swift and they weren't the real taylor swift but ai generated photos and some very sexually explicit uh sexually compromising positions all right and they were circulated all over X. Apparently, Swifties, as they are, they're called, uh, get uh, upset. And this article from New York Post writes, like Voltron, uh, fans immediately activated, feeding X with praise for the singer to elevate the good and bury the sham smut into the virtual basement. Meanwhile, Swifties also wondered how there are no regulations against someone creating fake porn using the likeness of real people and dis distributing it for the whole world to behold. I do believe there should be consequences to this. I'm not a big government guy. I I I, I want to think this through uh, uh, think this through a little more. But my initial reaction is that this this can't happen. This 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 can't happen. And 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 again, I, I'm 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 sorry that it happened to Taylor Swift. But I'm thankful that it happened to her because I think, right, she has a platform where obviously she can combat it and say, guys, this isn't me. Uh, this isn't true. But now that it's happened to her, everybody's paying attention to it. And if she thinks it's wrong, guess who else is going to think it's wrong? All of her followers, secular and all, they're all going to think it's wrong. They're all going to say, hey, we should do something about this. You know, and, and that's one of the reasons why I... We have to be careful. Even I have to be careful on the right. Not everything the left does or liberals do is bad. If she can bring attention to this issue with her mere name, that's a benefit. That's a benefit. And so I am sorry that this happened to her. I don't dislike the girl. All the Travis Kelty, Taylor Swift stuff, uh, it annoys the crap out of me. But and listen, 
there's a benefit to this. All right. The New York Post also writes, coincidentally, the Preventing Deep Fakes of Intimate Images Act was reintroduced to the House Judiciary Committee last week by U.S. Representatives Joseph Morrell, a Democrat, and also Tom Keene, a Republican. The bill would make the non-consensual sharing of digitally altered pornographic images a federal crime with penalties like jail time, a fine, or both. It would also allow victims to sue perpetrators in court. On Thursday, Morrell tweeted, the spread of AI-generated explicit images of Taylor Swift is appalling, and sadly, it's happening to women everywhere, every day. It's sexual exploitation, exploitation, and I'm fighting to make it a federal crime with my uh, legislation. And I don't believe, again, if you don't consent to having your picture shown in that way, it should not be shown. And definitely there should not be AI generated pictures of you. I think there's got to be consequences for that. Certainly on an individual basis, there are consequences and there should be uh, with uh, the so-called revenge porn. But I would say this, I would caution this too. People don't, don't, don't take pictures of yourself butt naked. Don't, don't do it. Young people out there, listen to me. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. I, I, I mean, obviously, AI generated stuff could pop up, but don't get yourself into a world of world of trouble. Right. Don't don't do that. Don't do that for anybody. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't do that. You know, you have a boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, they're not your husband and wife. First off, don't don't create pictures for them. You don't. I mean, you could be as lovey dovey as you want to be right now. You You never know when and if things will turn for the worse. And people's emotion, raw emotions get involved and breakups and all that kind of stuff, man. Just just don't do it. You know, this should be a valuable lesson, not just politically, uh, not just for Taylor Swift when it comes to AI. But uh, but man, th- th- this stuff, people will commit suicide and have committed suicide over stuff like this. So don't do that, guys. Just don't do it. Listen. Um, oh, you know what? Uh, there were. You know what? I'll, I'll save it for another podcast. There were some things that I wanted to bring to your attention. I, I Later, I'm going to do a podcast on the Chevron deference case, another Supreme Court case that I think everyone needs to be paying attention to besides what's happening uh, at the border. Uh, it's a really important case. We interviewed, I believe, one of the attorneys involved in the case over a year ago, and now this thing is becoming all the news. And so uh, I want to bring it back to the forefront, but this could be a major victory uh, for freedom uh, in the United States of America if uh, if the conservatives were to win in this Chevron deference case. So I'll get to that. Uh, also, Trudeau, apparently Justin Trudeau of Canada, uh, used false information to go against and attack uh, the truckers, you know, the convoy truckers that where they got their, uh, you know, froze their bank accounts and all this kind of stuff. Want to be dictator? Well, court cited against him, said he took his emergency orders too far. I wanted to get into that. That was a big story this week as well, but I'll add it to one of our upcoming podcasts. Guys, listen, I appreciate you tuning in to this edition of the Carl Jackson Show podcast. Again, your daily dose of objective truth in the world of confusion and lies. Until next time, do not grow weary doing good, and God bless you.